Alrighty, everybody. Welcome to the fourth official Foxhole Community Media stream. I have everybody here sitting with me. If you'd like to introduce yourselves. Hello, Stranger Dave. Somehow returned. Hi, I'm Sir. Hey guys, I saw Bear here, and today I'll be talking with people. A little bit of a different thing, but... Do we just have... Uh, I think that's everyone. Is that everyone? Is, wow. is that everyone? Yeah, Duke's, yep. Duke's all turning a little late, Yeah, I Duke's. Think. Yeah, I was waiting for him to start um, talking, but he's if, not here. If everyone... If anyone has access to Duke's, I'll just message him and tell him that uh, I say hello. You guys should see this, the, uh, the Discord right now. It's his name, just... A million times over again. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know if I introduced myself. <laughs> I'm Tiberius. I'm uh, one of the fine gentlemen that will be talking into your ear holes tonight. Um, hopefully, you'll enjoy it. Otherwise, uh, half of the intros were muffled by the music, apparently. Oh, well. Yeah. You I, I turn it off. I'm sorry, guys. I'm new at this. It's, it's what it yeah, is. So Learn little, with me. A little bit of <laughs> Technical difficulties on my end, so Tiberius is manning up and taking care of it for me. Yeah, I'm trying my best. Well, the devs weren't perfect the first time they streamed either, so. What are you saying? What are you saying? Uh, nothing. He speaks, blef he speaks blasphemy. He's I'm, wa I'm waiting for the ban. I'm waiting for the ban. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> ban, ban, ban. The entire Twitch site just shuts down. Just no. Ban from this panel? Yeah. You just ban <laughs> from Twitch. Yeah. Yeah, so. so um, what do you got for us? What do we got for us today? Uh, we, got, we got a lot to talk about. I mean, we've had a lot happen over the last. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've had uh, two major releases changing the entire meta of the game. Um, I know several people that I've talked to over the course of the last two weeks have uh, either decided to take a break from the game or say they're going to and then come back anyway because there's no quitting this game. You uh, you can't leave. <laughs> Once you're in, you're locked. It's impossible. <laughs> there's no way to go. Um, but uh, some major releases, again, uh, most of you watching this know the CV was released, the construction vehicle. Uh, I use that oh, for... Oh, God. Yeah. No, God. I mean, it's what <laughs> it is. It It's supposed to slow down the game, but, I mean, they make it happen. Um from talking to Casper, it's actually sped up the game because people are using it as sort of like a makeshift uh, shield. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> that seems like a very waste of a good CV, but, you know, edge does edge. Only 100 mats, to be fair. Um, only 100 mats. Only 100 mats and, like, a that's quarter of a million fuel required to get across yeah, the that, map. Yeah, you just need to literally give it all the fuel you have. Logi doesn't get any fuel anymore. We're just having in CVs. In fact, I've basically gone <laughs> into a truck before. Yep. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Guys, we're going back to original foxhole. We have to we have to bring everything by hand to places we God. We need the wheelbarrow. That's what we need. Um No. <laughs> I would love it. I don't know why it, yeah. HB, come on, give me a wheelbarrow. Give me some love. It's, yeah. it's Seriously. Because... Especially now that you gave took away our tech parts for like fifty percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, no. You're no, giving giving us musical bad. instruments but not wheelbarrows. Oh yeah, Rick yeah, that's a thing. We'll get to that later, though. Yeah, we yeah. will get to that later. <laughs> uh, so no, a few other things uh, were the uh, gun nests. I'm pretty sure everyone's been obliterated by a frag grenade, and they don't know where it's <laughs> from. But uh, so much. it's there. Those, <laughs> it's always uh, watching. <laughs> Just because I know friendly fires happened a lot. Really, friendly yeah. fire? Well, yeah. Friendly? Okay, you're right. A little, a little bit. bit. I, for, for me, it's been a lot of people running up when they shouldn't have and getting you killed by the thing that you're trying to kill. Oh, my God. I got to love the new yeah. guys. I'm going to go take out this foxhole with my rifle, and, and the entire squad's dead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Type, type here, check your messages. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I especially when you're trying to run up and, and just throw a couple HEs at... Uh, you know, the and smoke, you get that one guy who decides, oh, I'm going to walk to the side of the thing, and it's going to track that grenade. I swear those grenades are heat sinking. They are pretty on point, and they're pretty rapid fire, too, so. The, 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 yeah, I, the rate that they can fire them is faster than I think I can fire them. I'm probably wrong. They probably actually timed that, knowing them. But... I don't know. I, I've managed to use 60 grenades in, like, two minutes' time, so... Well, remember, there's that bug where, like, if uh, you throw it, it just kind of holds in your hand. 
you know like like i don't know if that's been corrected or not but you know try spamming h use as something and suddenly one decides to stick in my hand as if it's glue yeah another thing too uh the smoke grenades getting those to time well um it's really important um i don't think a lot of people have picked up on how to properly engage a uh, gun nest i mean there are a lot out there that know how to but it's just not commonplace yet so by the time you're well, throwing your smokes you're already getting engaged by the frag grenades on the bright side smoke grenades are actually getting used now by the hundreds on the That's flip true. side you don't have any other options anymore because sulfur <laughs> yeah exactly wow. yeah yeah. Um, yeah sulfur too another <laughs> mm. major Once those uh, heavy machine guns or whatever come in then it's going to change everything yeah yeah exactly uh well yeah. those are we talked about those a lot on the last uh community stream I, it's I not high for forward and, yeah i do look forward to carrying casper on his throne <laughs> jeez Just, never never leaving his spot on the uh field gun I, I can see it um yeah so sulfur i mean anybody who's played Logi knows how difficult it is um how easy it is to just lose track of those spawn times and lose the sulfur one second you've got nine stacks and the next you've got wait where did the nine stacks go somebody's hiding <laughs> off in a box in the corner of the map i mean we're we we're playing uh yesterday on yep. the campaign and there was a guy up behind one of our bases who was just shipping he had like 400 explosive material just in his own private stash, and we're like, we're going to come and take this now. It's ours. Goodbye. Just in an outpost. He just threw it in an outpost. He built yeah. an outpost just to hoard literally everything. It was yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, yeah. Really, it was really bad. He was like, no, I was going to make arty shells with those. We're like, sorry, Speaking man. of which, those, for those people that were at Brian Glenn yesterday, and you're getting uh, artillery dropped in your heads, that was me. Also, I know I'm not supposed to call attention to chat, but if you're this person listening in chat, just ignore this section what he said um oh yeah uh let's see what so okay so february smooth uh what do you got what do you got uh, going us? down the list we got spawning at the uh, hometown which is the new feature that was implemented and i feel like it was it's a blessing in disguise um i mean that's my personal take on it i don't know about you i've, I've just been it's <laughs> It's, it's been a, nice not having to worry about spawn supplies for that one location. Yeah, I don't think in the campaign's lifespan, this current one, we've been in a situation where nobody's been able to spawn because too many people are spawning, which is one of the things that they put in place to make sure that you don't abuse that system. Yeah. But um, it seems so far to be working well. I'm not sure what other people's takes on it are. Yeah, I've I've had no hiccups with that system so far like that's that's the extent of what i can say about it yeah yeah uh so and then the last one is the uh resistance camp uh have any of you guys seen that on the field at all being used i don't think not uh yeah actually really? oh really um once uh was it pug, was it pug? We were we were hitting um, someone's uh, hometown. I think it was their last region on Weather Expanse, and we were basically sieging that city for a long while. We were, Pug was actually with us on that one. We we basically got into their last town, and we couldn't you know do much of anything. We had a lot of cohesion. We had an artillery, but we ran out of shells, and we couldn't keep denying the that that structure. It seems to have very close to the same hit points as a normal town hall which I'd, I'd have to have the devs confirm that for me but that seems kind of weak you know it shouldn't be uh, the same amount to destroy this building as it does to destroy a couple tents um especially considering how you know cheap it is to build that thing they built it so many times and every single time you had to throw a bunch of artillery at it um it's, it's been a bit i don't know it's a bit, a bit frustrating I guess that basically served its point. It gave them a spot to respawn. They could rebuild it really quickly. Um, gave them time to get this construction vehicle. I don't know how long that war went after I left, but it, it, it did its purpose. It might be interesting to see in the future the reduced health of buildings if we, act if we actually get a fog of war on buildings. Mm. 
Because yeah. then I imagine a resistance camp might be a bit more powerful being able to uh, sort of become stealthed at long range. Well, and and to be fair, the resistance camp still has a lot of... Uh, it still has some downsides, like that it can't supply foxholes and stuff like that, so... It's not yeah, like it's all that, powerful. that does make it almost... See, let's say you're in a last stand situation and you're building a resistance camp. The fact that I can't power any any foxes or anything with it just makes it, you know, that much harder to come back from. You're already at your last stand. All it does is lengthen the war. Um, I mean, I don't know if anyone's actually come back after using it. I know we still eventually won that map, but yeah, I don't know. I I, I still have to see it used a lot more in order to make an actual judgment. Even if it's only used once, it, it's served its purpose. It's meant to give you an outlet so that you you aren't like prevented mechanically from not coming back from a war just because because like the mechanics don't let you even if you have the will and for those oh. of you in the chat right now that is duke salt who has joined us yeah. he, he finally yeah, responded. Responded. i don't know what you guys are talking about yeah oh sorry yeah we just kind of spammed <laughs> I mean, him with yeah. uh, thousands of duke salts um, sorry i was the one not paying attention he's been here since forever yeah, yeah just dude, I, I literally just sleep in this channel and you guys just come in here whenever you want to record don't ever ask my permission because he's speed. always on air yeah always forever for everyone um, involved it might be interesting to see if varying levels of structure for instance we have either no structure we have the resistance camp the outpost and the town hall it might be interesting to see those individual structures making other structures connected to them more difficult to destroy so a foxhole connected to a resistance camp would fire less often and be far more fragile than one defending a town hall that's an interesting way of doing a balance with that that's hmm that's that's actually a kind of a cool idea because uh, even you could then maybe even make foxholes that were outside of an area still be able to fire but as opposed to being these deadly defenses it's more like just trying to catch uh, a few flankers unaware out in the middle of nowhere yeah Tier yeah, 2 tunnel that. network, anyone? No. <laughs> <laughs> Increases the range up um, to 80 oh, meters. Th oh. That's been a bug that I know Prince has been complaining about quite a bit. No, tier, so yeah, so, so when you upgrade a foxhole up to a gun nest, right? If you have someone sitting on it, they're stuck there. They don't get shoved out. Um, oh. They just kind of have to sit there during, the, like, uh, yeah, when you blueprint it. I thought the devs released a hotfix for that. <laughs> was that was that hotfix? Oh, I know, I know. I don't Prince know. I mean, I remember like somebody week. talking about it, but I'd, yeah, uh, somebody would have to confirm. Hotfix, hot pockets. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a weak one. Um, no, I, I know that that the gun nest has its quirks. You know, there's the fact that the the heat sticking grenades <laughs> are basically just that. Um, this the defenses and and line of sight thing is, is very, I don't know it it feels a pain in the rear because you might think that you're completely protected from something line of sight, but then it turns around and shoots you, especially anti tank turrets. Yeah, um, we've been dealing with this a lot yeah. recently. Actually, everybody, it's weird because I feel like the defensive meta has changed with. I, I, maybe it's just in this campaign because of the amount of refined mats that are being thrown around because it goes kind of into the next topic we're going to talk about, the current campaign that's going on. I mm. want to say, what, four days now? Um, oh, yeah, how's it going? I should check it's, it out. Uh, it's uh, been it's... A, a tug of war, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, we've... I'm so excited about it because it's not, it's not for lack of trying like that last time a war went on for fucking ages. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, it's yeah, funny. You it. should see the other two servers that are active. Like they're on the two hundreds, and nobody's on them. Like day two hundred well, or something like that. No, we got even Fox three where these... it's at, bro. Yeah, <laughs> these campaigns Why would you though fight are on a regular server when you could mm. be a tar uh, try hard. But remember that this is nothing more than a regular server. It's just being called attention to. Yeah, no, with bragging true. rights. Would that see? It, it gets the mark of approval. Well, I mean, yeah. Casper's the mark only... of approval. <laughs> <laughs> the only significance is that it's copyrighted. Uh, yeah, it's like a a, a meta kind of like these things all connect together into a larger framework, even though they don't impact anything gameplay. It's just you know something else to tie everything together. And I think we're right. coming up on like thirty thousand casualties now, which is pretty pretty freaking great. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, that's something that that's another, those are numbers you see during like World Conquest when you had it. Yeah. Um, I don't think we ever got to that total in World Conquest. Just well, maybe uh, we did on the first one. You couple. Yeah, I think in a yeah. couple. Yeah. But... And during the weekly wars, they have those at the end, like the war correspondence. Um, they'll finish up and tell you what the casualties are for the map at that point in time. But, yeah. Uh, that's a good segue into the next one, the uh, community uprising, as uh. As I like to call it, um, the community up. What does that even mean? <laughs> it's the uh, when we got together in the uh, Foxhole official Discord and we we're like, "Hey, do we uh, still want to do weekly wars?" And uh, yes, if yes. If we want to push our attention onto the uh, the campaigns instead. <laughs> <laughs> now, for for those of the that that don't know, um, the, there was a group of players that just got together and just started talking after one of the. Uh, the wars basically ended in a couple hours um it was a seam roll and a lot of players got together and just started talking about alternatives and one of the ideas of thrown around was basically getting rid of the community wars and putting the emphasis on the campaigns um now i think that's that's essentially what has happened for the most part uh i don't casper i don't know if you if that was a shiggles night that was just a plain old night but, oh don't ask casper what he um, thinks about that night because he won't shut up about how much you know <laughs> casper oh, yeah, yeah yeah well he won't shut up but you can't, you um, can't call attention to casper now he'll somehow get into the uh into the discord call what do you mean now uh, he, no 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 <laughs> um so oh, yeah so, so sir, preemptively banned him, him from the discord that was actually that was nightbot <laughs> For the record, um, the ouch. Uh, so that meeting, though, it, it brought together a, a what was it thirty people we had, yeah, um, talking about it, and you know, a proposal came forward, and and it actually, for once, you actually see a lot of people talking about it. Uh, that's something that the community doesn't seem to like to do is talk. You know, they like to complain. We like to, you know, <laughs> say our opinions, but you don't have an actual discussion on on an issue. And I think this is one of those universal issues that everyone was like, hang on a second. We got to get some ideas. Um, but so and that, that brought about the Reddit post, which, <laughs> sorry to say, it was basically a lot of people repeating the same thing. But I think everyone was on the same page. Um, but it's good to see this type of, you know, talking going on and, and the feedback. And on top of that, the devs, you know, actually listening to this type of feedback and actually doing something about it be fair i think it all just stems like i'm in the same boat but no one really enjoys a steamroll that much I mean, everyone i've talked to has said no, this, when it happens this it's just like the deadlines has been the best war like in a long time winning it is yes, fun yeah. in foxhole but i play foxhole for the struggle of it one of my favorite moments was a like five hour long firefight where we held the high ground in callahan's uh, in Crumbling Passage, but we had no logistics, whereas the Colonials had to wild spawn, but they had some top-notch logistics. It was amazing. One of, one of my favorites was winning a weekly war and then going on to Umbra Wildwood, seeing uh, Pug on their last town, doing a last stand, and we come in there and rescue them. Yeah, I said it. We rescued you. Um, <laughs> Why do you but, need to but, do this? But but the type of the pipe the type space. of <laughs> safe space. Uh, no, the type of the type of um, ability to get those reinforcements in, you know, this this fresh of or the the, the breath the breath of fresh air basically into into a combat. Just and then that's enough to really pull it around. We saw that with the campaign basically. Um, we worked with you know the UN uh, BLD did and. And uh, that was cool, Act, you know, working together and and basically taking back, you know, half of Deadlands from nothing. Um, yeah, no, it was it, it was it was a it was a venture, honestly. It was, it was mean, sketch, is what it was. It was sketch as hell. It was. Um, yeah, our front lines were like a giant snake across the corner of the map. That was unsettled. Yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking of sketch, shout out to uh, Toby and Sketch. I don't know if the wardens have anybody on their side that are just pumping out BMATs, yes. but um, Toby had yesterday 3,500 minutes active session logged into the game, AFK farming slash active farming on components, and I think at the second day, they're probably at 120,000 components farmed. They're just yep. fucking going ham. 
And it's like the number of tech parts he had in his yeah. pocket. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it's it's. I think tech parts they had almost two, like one full truck, maybe like one and a half trucks of uh, tech parts yeah. at this point in time, and there's I think they're still going at it. It's crazy. Yeah, for for all the <laughs> tier three walls that were being done, that's yeah, that's who you have to blame, wardens. Yeah. Um, no, that that was cool. Uh, do you remember a guy Salt Industries Salt? Uh, <laughs> he, he he was basically the only other person that you, that could produce that type of stuff, but. But Toby I mean, comes by. The problem yeah. with Salt, though, is that he would get the armats and then just make half tracks. And then we'd have <laughs> nobody actually fighting. Everybody would just be driving a half track and screaming for a gunner. Yeah. Yeah. I, give me a gunner, not a no rank. That's that's the battle cry of a half track driver. <laughs> um, yeah. So so what else? What else do we have to talk about with the, with the new stuff? We got a lot of new stuff that. Yeah, we you know, do. Dev stream. Uh, yeah, so I'd definitely like to eventually so, circle back to the current war just to talk about like why it's lasted so long and if there's anything different about this war that anyone like the community of the devs can learn to work towards in the future to make wars more satisfying. No trolls. Um, think, yeah, I think uh, it's okay. Uh, I, just like a quick it's, note it's on it. I think it's because the player base is even at this point in time, like. I know there have been discussions about how the UN goes back and forth between the two, but like there are strong warden clans, like really strong warden clans. Yeah. Edge and 82DK, um, like Ass and several others, they're, they know what they're doing. They have skilled labor. They're training new people in constantly. And mm -hmm. the Colonials have always had a problem with the new recruits. Uh, we haven't really been organized and able to like properly train them. Uh, so having the UN on our side this time has really helped, like, balance the amount of, like, well-versed players on the field. Well, it's been a balance, but also keep in mind it is during the week, you know. Yeah, that's uh, true. Most of, the, most of the UN players are weekend warriors, uh, despite the nature of the weekly wars. And this is something that, being the campaigns happening throughout the week, that's actually balancing that out by nature, you know. Uh, and that's something basically that we thought would happen. Uh, with the proposal, it was basically a calculated thing. Um, yeah, no, that yeah, that's true. Yep. Um, yeah, no, and I think I think <laughs> the the number of trolls has forced us to come back from really awkward positions. But I, I don't know how, if the Warrens have been dealing with it as much as we have. Uh, you guys, I don't know if you guys can speak to it, but um, just the amount of trolling that's been going on. I know uh, the devs asked for feedback. Uh, on the last stream, because I had to bring up the Q and A question of, of you know the the player report system, and how I think it's really needs work. Um, but they're they're asking for feedback, and and so far the devs have been, you know, listening. They've been doing great work uh, with the feedback so far. So I'm looking forward to see it, uh, you know, evolve. Yes, one second. Yeah, I, I, I never really have too much of a problem with trolling, but that's because I don't see it very often. I hear it going on in the chat quite a bit, but I'm never there to see it, so I don't really feel I can pass a lot of judgment on certain situations. Um, well, that's, and that's the other thing, is a lot of people used to be quick to judge, and now we can't be quick to judge, and I think a lot of us have learned. Yeah. Um, also, mm -hmm. it's a lot... It's it's harder for a lot of people who are part of big clans and are active in the community to know how it is sometimes to deal with trolls because like I know especially in pug like I'm insulated for all that because I'm constantly surrounded by pug guys wherever I go so it's a lot harder for griefers to fuck around griefers uh, like thrive when there's not a lot of people when they're not organized and they aren't communicating and everyone's kind of just out for themselves that's when they do the best work so it's kind of hard for them to even try the kind of bullshit they get away with a lot. I still feel like we need to have something pop up when an ally destroys particular allied structures. Because it's obvious that there is somewhere a note about who about uh, which faction the structures belong to. Mm -hmm. And it would be very nice to see if a, for example, outpost got destroyed, we could see X player destroyed the outpost. Um, that's if that's something I actually saw one day. I saw someone. I don't know where I saw it, but I, it might have even been a dev branch uh, thing. 
but there was a message did pop up saying that X person had destroyed something. Now I know that the the mods have access to seeing this damage stuff. I actually don't know how reliable that information is because I've actually had an issue where I've gone to the mods and said, "Hey, this guy literally threw a grenade at my truck," and then they go, "Well, I can't see worthwhile team damage." What do you mean? I just watched him. I have a video of him throwing it. Um, so I think there's some reporting, you know, that that needs to be looked at. Um, no, I don't think that that type of stuff should be called out. I know for me, I destroy a lot of blueprints and that, that seems blueprints to blueprints are different. I'm talking about like a fully constructed outpost. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I know that they are looking at having outposts become ruins, um, for that, at least the time. Yeah. Period. There's a, there's a couple things they've been talking about with that, but I know that yeah. after like this last round of particularly egregious griefers and stuff. And even before that, uh, before this last patch, they've been like um, working on. They, of course, they're always working on new stuff, right? And I'm sure there's going to be a huge boost in like uh, accountability stuff like that for early access. Um, but like now, um, you get notifications whenever someone destroys a building. It's not as descriptive as it could be, but that's on purpose because we're we're doing it in bits and pieces, you know, mm -hmm. um, just to try and. Make sure we don't upset anything too crazy and don't like take away certain parts of the sandbox and stuff like that. But we're definitely the 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 dev team is always looking at stuff like that and better ways to report it to the team and stuff like that. Of course, you know, mm -hmm. pre-alpha everything's in its bare bones, but you know. Well, yeah. and, and take and think about this: is within what around a month we'll have early access where there's suddenly going to be a cost of the game. And the amount of multi accounting will go way down. I mean, heck, if 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 one troll decides to buy the game twice, let them. <laughs> I'd rather do the devs Congratulations, yeah, twice. you played yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. Um, do you guys so think it would be worthwhile for the devs to maybe implement a system, um, like a system where if someone says say blows up your truck, you can decide to either punish or forgive them be like okay well that truck was broken anyway so it doesn't really matter like yeah I asked them to blow it up kind of thing and that it also it, it would serve to give you a notification on what's happening to the objects you've constructed as well as give you the option to either actually punish or forgive the person what what game is it that that uses that is it red orchestra um, um well, i know I have, they have a red orchestra game. does have a forgiveness or... system yeah, for team killing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that type of system would be really cool, especially for frontline combat. You know, just to have a team damage not count as much. You know, hit the button, and that team damage doesn't count. But I don't think you can really do a forgive and forget system for like buildings, obviously. But because um, there are moments, and I think we were talking about this last night, there are moments when let's say the enemy is pushing into your own town. Maybe I want to destroy the armories myself. So, you know, it's it's a they're, they're pushing in. I want to destroy it so they can't take advantage of them. And I'm going to fall back to my other town. You know, there are moments where, and especially in the sandbox, that is a valid tactic. And it's really hard to, to judge I think you know, at, who's at that building it. Time, to. You'd want to use like the team chat to be like, hey, they're moving in on this location. I person myself am going to be destroying this building. Mm -hmm. And then they'll see yeah. the subsequent team damage. And, like, as long as people understand that, like, oh, this is, like, a strategic thing. This is what we're doing. They'd go for it. I mean, because. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's something that, that I, I preach to the BLD guys a lot. Because we tend to walk around and we'll go and say, oh, we want to rearrange half the map. You know, we're not going to throw out these grenades and just have someone walk by and go, what are you doing? You know, we're going to make it very apparent that, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, uh, yesterday, for instance, we, we removed some walls and some defenses in order to create basically our own storage depot. Um, just to be able to streamline logistics. But without having to be able to blow up stuff of our own, we wouldn't have been able to make room for that. You know, yep. or... Or blowing up defenses in order to place a better tier three wall or something. Yeah, you'd be surprised like, how quick that like low level scrappers will come run into an explosion sound with their sledgehammers out. Like, what's up? What's going on? I'm gonna beat you <laughs> to death. <laughs> Get your ass back here with those HE grenades. <laughs> like in the shitty horror movies when they hear the really creepy sound. Oh, what's that? I should go and go into the game. Yeah. yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I think the troll system is something that's going to... It'll get fixed one way or another. It's just we got to give them a little bit of time and feedback. Um, you know, uh, they're really good at listening uh, to what we have to say, um, especially how much I complain. Hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. They do listen. You go to the yeah. suggestions so, well, page, this, you go to the general. Good for, it's especially good for, like, trolls and stuff because this is a problem the community has to deal with more so than the devs do. Whereas if like you know mechanics not working, then that's something on the devs' part that they really have to deal with. But if there's trolls in the game running free, then that's something we as a community have to deal with, more or less. Yeah, exactly. Well, and we have to make sure the devs are are aware of of repeat issues that we see. You know, they're not they're not omnipotent. You know, they don't see literally everything that runs through our minds. Like, oh, this adds a stress to me. Well, they don't know that. They don't have a stressometer in the back end. <laughs> um, so that's the type of stuff that, that we as players have to give feedback for. Um, and not just complain, you know, actual feedback. This is what I see, and this is what, what happens as a result. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you got lined up for us as far as... Uh, uh, I've got something that make make the loins of all of the Warden players a little bit on the uh, frisky side. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. So if we uh, want to switch topics over to the uh, new warden tank, that was uh, <laughs> just War- warden tank. Yeah. Oh man. Yep. It was funny. All my guys were like, I "Oh, hey, words. look, it's gonna be our uh, new target practice." And I'm like, "No, actually, it's probably gonna be the thing running us over the most often <laughs> campaigns <laughs> now." So, yeah. Not Milady Leander. Um, no, <laughs> the, uh, this tank. See, what you need to worry about is that, like, a third of the Warden clans that aren't currently playing Foxhole aren't playing Foxhole because they were waiting for tanks. And so, like, we're just going to have, uh, what what would it be, 20 tanks? 20 tanks running around just with full crews. <laughs> Nobody does Ludgy anymore, just tanks. I, I imagine. It's going to be amazing. Oh, my God, it's going to be so good, guys. <laughs> I need to show you this image because it goes well with what I'm about to say. Um, uh-huh. We're going to have mariachi bands. Riding around yes. on the tanks because Man. if the devs put it in, we may have musical instruments. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can I can I do my talk about this? Jeez. Why not? Got, uh, I would just time. like to say uh, before uh, new new game mode on the horizon, I definitely see happening is uh, World of Foxhole Tanks. I, I think it's going to be a great success. <laughs> you right. know, okay. I'm I'm it. mad. I'm angry about this though. Where's my bagpipes? <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Don't don't worry. These were just like the first musical instruments added. Well, they're not well, even. They're not even sure if they're adding them. What? Well, the yeah, they're, they're there. Read the dev Yeah, well, the models are there, but I I will give my arguments as to why the devs, because the devs watch this, so I will give my arguments as to why the devs absolutely need to add musical instruments to the game. So, uh-huh. if anyone here has played or at least watched. Um, I believe it was the Napoleonic Wars oh, DLC yeah. or the mod for uh, Mountain Mountain Blade Warband. Um, a thing you could do in that mod was you could play a musical instrument, so either like a trumpet or or a set of drums, and you would actually boost stats for your teammates around you. So like you would either help them increase accuracy or reload speed or something like that. From what I, I remember I'm... hearing is that they actually wanted to stay away from stat buffing. Because I at one point thought it would be an awesome idea to have like an officer's whistle or something of that nature, mm-hmm. wherein you could make everybody sprint faster or possibly not run out of sprint for a short duration. But see, sort of do it over enough, the top. I think I think it would really add like another team play element to the game if you could have that kind of thing, and but, it would also give a reason to have these musical instruments, not just have them for the sake of wasting a bunch of mats on something absolutely useless could, kind of thing could i could i follow around could i get 59 people to follow on one person with a pistol and just make them completely op god imagine how easy uh, logic would be if you could increase your sprint duration oh man it just, <laughs> oh god just, just have prince sitting in the background yelling at us and well i like, think one of the things they would have to do is make it so that you can't stack buffs on top of each other yeah, yeah, Casper has a good new, point. We don't need a new logi secondary teams. item. Trumpet, trumpet makes you move faster. But <laughs> but here's the thing, okay? Whenever I play music in game, like like you know, all you all know that I do that, right? When yep. I play music in game, it does nothing but get people to bounce up and down around me. 
<laughs> you know, including wardens. It yeah, doesn't if actually. Never do had anything. the uh, pleasure of listening to uh, Will Smith while you're scrapping. You should give it a try. It's actually a lot of fun, <laughs> and it keeps you from wanting to blow your brains out. Yeah, right. Why do you th- why do you think I play it? Um, yeah, exactly. But but the other thing is, the, the there are some actual tactical uses of this. I mean, I lead bagpipe charges, you know, on occasion. Uh, everyone's like, you know, hey, there's a bagpipe. Or follow him. Um, but using these for for tactical purposes, you know, I could see like 82 DK getting up in that, uh, using them as like signals across the battlefield. Um, because role play value uh but no it's like right now the the voice chat system needs a lot of work so they might end up using that across the field yeah but yeah there's definitely the a tank, lot of um, tank though ui issues that the other be, thing hold on the other yeah, before maybe. tanks there was one other thing i wanted to mention maybe yeah. two but one other for sure I wanted to mention instruments is that instruments would actually provide a really good um honest too because imagine if the colonials and wardens had different songs they could play on their instruments Colonials that would be pretty. Have different traditional instruments. Well, my, my well, initial so take on the really instruments was uh, troll food. Um, oh, I'm sorry, my internet's being weird. Um, it's in really interesting that you mentioned Napoleonic Wars um, and everything because I actually used to be part of a clan that, like, semi competitively, not really would do like big clan battles and stuff. And uh, like the line battles. Yes, and like even though like the musical instruments didn't make the biggest deal it was always the centerpiece of our formations because who doesn't want to have a trumpeteer or a bagpipe guy and like mm-hmm. a flag bearer and stuff that's why we always love playing the british because you get the bagpipes it's just yeah it's, it's one of those exactly. little details that's like that like adds so much beyond um what, what, it, what the actual effort is for the content, why couldn't right? we have had yeah, instruments the, the when we do the parade remember the parade Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. As soon as we get instruments, we're going to do another one. Um, yeah, that'd be fantastic. So what do you guys think about that tank, though? I, uh, wardens. You got, you have, we have wardens Absolutely. in the chat. Uh, we have wardens okay. in the... I'll be I, the colonial tank more. Okay. I like Thank angles. You. I don't like round shapes. So, but... I like them. Both, both tanks are beautiful, but for different reasons. I like the Colonial tank because it looks like an allied bastard tank. It has, like, a Stuart <laughs> turret, yeah. and it has, like, a the front body looks like something that the British would make for an armored car. Right. And then the rear cabbage, or the rear, uh, the rear carriage cabbage. looks, uh, the rear cabbage, yes. Colonial tanks now cabbage is confirmed. <laughs> um, the rear carriage for it looks very much so like some sort of Russian creature. So all in all, it looks beautiful because of how, like, thrown together it looks. I love the Warden tank, too, because it looks like the Wardens were like, okay, guys, we're making a light tank. Yes, we will design the best light tank ever. And then they kept adding on to it, and it's like, guys, I think that we accidentally made a medium tank. No, no, it's perfect. (laughs) Just stick a bigger (laughs) engine in it. Wasn't the, uh, just, just backtracking to the Colonial tank a bit, wasn't the chassis of the Colonial tank kind of modeled after one of the Japanese World War II tanks? It, it, I think it looks kind of similar, but I think it just breaks down to the size, really. What um, I saw from it was the like the British armored car. What was it? It looked similar. It looked a little bit like uh, a Christie suspension, but it, it wasn't yeah. terribly like detailed. Well, the thing about the light tanks is you don't have a lot of room for detail. I know that the, the Warren tank looks a lot more unique. You know, and they, they did, you know, with the amount of space that you have on the model, you know, they did what they could. I just think that the turret just doesn't match the rest of the tank. Or the warden tank? Yeah, the turret. Mm. It just it's got the just... same rounded features as the the front of the uh, chassis. No, 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 I no, like no it's the moldings perfect. around the gun netlet that the, the, looks the, like. Oh yeah, yeah. Look like they're they're it's way overdone, and like you could have done the same job for much less, you know, expense or so, whatever. But they yeah. did it. No, there's just I like really, a perfect story for it. Just they were I, trying to make a tank, but all of their tank factories were destroyed, so they had to like combine three different tank factories. But but that does, that actually goes against the, the lore that they wanted to go with this. Like they wanted the the Warren tank to be like a lot more complete than the 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 Colonial tank. The Colonial tank is supposed to be, you know, something that they put together um, as a need, whereas the Warren tank is precisely made 
you know and it kind of reminds me of the you know the way the germans made their stuff they they went for quality over quantity instead of whereas the 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 you know the allies went uh quantity over quality really right, i mean if you look I at the side plating, a, uh, oh yeah there we go oh, perfect. Yep. check yep. that out well it's it's not even um, like quality over quantity it's like if, if you look at like the colonial tank right first of all i'm never gonna stop saying rivets because fucking rivets man but <laughs> rivets right all these like just slap together plates right but the warden tank Look at those little stair ladder thingies on the side. Yeah. You don't fucking need little stair ladder thingies on the side. Wow. You don't need all that molding. Mm -hmm. That doesn't add anything. They put wow. it on there anyway because they care so much about their craftsmanship, right? Like the yeah. colonials, they just climb up the side of the tank. They'll hey, man, it's for all those paraplegic... Climb up. It's for all the paraplegic tank drivers in the Warden Army, mm -hmm. don't you know? Ah, equal opportunity. Oh, they're ahead of the time. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it's all yeah. those little details that don't really need to be there, but they did it anyway. That I think is going to set this apart. And plus, I think this is the first like concept vehicle for each faction. I'm really, really interested to see what they do with the these are the final products because they're just more. Room oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, well and that's why one, I was saying the size is limiting. But. One other thing I will mention. I, this is a personal thing. I don't particularly like the name of the Warden Light Tank. I much better like the hatchet from the Colonials. But oh, the, the Devit Devit? Mark III? Yeah. I don't know. This, it just doesn't sound as cool as hatchet. I'm I'm disappointed also, by um, the, the Warden insignia. I do like the cool little stripe of paint down along the side, but I don't yeah, like the... Uh, well, I sorry, mean, it, this is the finished product, but I mean, they were throwing around a few other things, and I think they what they did here was actually really good um, with the yeah. way that they finished off the product. Like the final product yeah. is really good. Like, yeah, that, that, they're, they're uh, definitely uh, that, I mean, that a you, design is totally a whippet tank from the British in world war one or, yeah. or I think that, yes, it is a whippet. I, I honestly thought they yeah. were going to go with a whippet for the, 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 like, it's funny. Cause it kind of looks like they just took the turret and turned it the other way. Um, on the, on the going back products. to like the the mild yeah. disappointment in the warden logo, I think the difference is that whereas the colonial logo might just be the army logo or the military logo for whatever they were before they decided to invade our lands, the warden logo was probably passed down throughout however long the wardens have existed. Yeah, uh, there's a guy I know called Beric. You notice that it's one red bar away from being the French flag. <laughs> <laughs> Surrender, why don't you? Um, it's also I do, I do one like the shot. Far away from being the Polish flag. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think the seeing, image... seeing the tank in the snow does make it look just yeah. like it fits though. I, I feel it like really it has does. like a Russian. It's also vibe one to half. It. Yeah. Like a like it's a. It's also one half. Uh, not even not like a, a Soviet vibe. Being but... away from a uh, surrender flag. <laughs> yeah, not even like a, a Soviet vibe, but it does remind me a little bit of like something that I I think like the Sardom would build, like the the Russian yeah. like oligarchy type thing, you know? Well, no, yeah. no, okay. So this is something that I had in my mind, right? I I really see the birth of a tank destroyer in this tank. You 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 know you you raise up the top part, you get rid of the turret, and you shove a gun a cannon out the front, and this thing instantly becomes a tank destroyer. Mobile artillery. Like, yeah, I, like I really, 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 really can't wait to see the evolution between this and the like, and the medium tank. Yeah, so do you guys think um, the next tanks, the medium and the heavy tank, assuming those are what are coming out in the future, do you think those, or at least some of those designs, will be built upon the chassis of the light tank or will be completely different designs? Because I, I know I bring this up a lot, but I was a big fan of Valkyria Chronicles, and throughout the art books, like all the medium tanks in the game were almost modeled after the chassis of a light tank, but it just like slapped on with a bigger gun. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think there's going to be they, some evolution. I think yeah. they'd need like to start with a new platform. Like mm -hmm. I think it would make total sense for platforms to have variations. It's like make an assault gun or tank destroyer out of the hull of a light tank or a heavy or a medium tank. But these guys just seem so small and especially like either really old or very much like slapped together last minute for the specific purpose that I don't really see them being able to fulfill any roles outside of their narrowly defined light tank stuff, you know? 
Exactly. I mean, I think they're probably going to keep the architecture like styles very rounded, um, refined okay. for right, the right. warden and for the colonials. It's really going to be angular um, and efficient. I hope that the warden uh, art style keeps the look of. We're not sure if this is a pillbox or a tank, but we're fine with it. <laughs> okay. Okay. No. One one last thing about this tank is you see that corner just above the uh, the main light. Mm -hmm. it's, in reality, you don't want to have forward facing plates just like that because one direct shot is probably going to go through. You need you need some sloping to that armor or at least some curvature, you know. Someone that, was saying something about tank a... traps. I think whenever the, when this was revealed, I think the the, the catchphrase was tank trap or or, or sorry, round, was it was it uh, uh, round uh, trap? So so basically, the idea is that you basically create an area that was designed to absorb the round instead of deflecting it um, or or contain okay. it. Um, now, if I buy that, I I don't think I do, but I know that was the. The, the the terminology everyone was going oh this is probably what this is and i'm just like that's sworn hopeful thinking now i'm really actually curious though if like i know the tanks are supposed to be very identical in, in what they can do um now i'm wondering if there's actually a trade-off here though if you look at this tank it's got very well protected um you know the, the plating on the on the tracks Whereas it doesn't look like it can sustain a frontal hit, uh, particularly with the, where the driver has to sit in the, in the mailbox. Um, I, I really, really curious if like there's going to be some trade-offs there. Whereas the the colonial tank can't really take a hit to the tracks, but it can take you know frontal hits, side hits, and so on. Well, another thing too you need to remember is the warden tank also has uh, heavier armor. Um, they yeah. use that's probably like a thicker steel. I just put up the image again uh, with oh, all the stats by a, by a and whole the whole three millimeters, or well, I mean, yeah. I, I, I can't actually tell because I'm looking at a very very blurry. So uh, armor is two... 32 millimeters. Yeah. So another thing that I'd like to talk yeah. about is warden tanks are going to be really superior in an environment where it's really cluttered, whereas colonial tanks are going to be more superior in a an open environment. Because the colonial tanks have a centered turret, whereas the warden tanks have a uh, mm -hmm. front peeking turret, mm, so we yeah, can play peekaboo true. very well. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's, yep. That's a good point. Um, now keep that in mind, though. It just makes your your ass a lot more exposed and vulnerable. It's okay. The well, other five warden tanks bringing up the rear will protect me. <laughs> you do realize That's that that means that you're going to have 15 people dedicated to tanks in your lodges. Yeah, oh go god. Down. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> fine. The wardens will. Just adopt the Soviet strategy. Instead of getting more tank armor, you just get soldiers to sit on top of the tank. They are your tank armor. Perfect. Um, oh, that's that and also, uh, you're assuming uh, that every tank has a tank commander. Obviously, all of Edge just sits in the tanks, and then Casper is the only <laughs> tank commander there. So Casper rides behind them in the CV, yelling at them. <laughs> Over there! <He's> nice. <laughs> Over there, yeah. Um, by the way, uh, Dwayne just found the critical weakness of this tank, by the way, so rip wardens on suicide watch. The weakness is you just get a, a, an envelope full of anthrax and slip it in the mail slot. And <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. I cannot it's okay. wait to the, bonsai charge tanks so bad. The the mail slot is uh, is there to, to, so that way we can receive our orders. I feel like this tank is going <laughs> to yell Das Boot <laughs> at me, honestly, because it's got like the it, medieval knight... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, now hang on. Now, there, if there's one complaint I have right now as far as styling in the game, it's the turret. I want to see the turret get redesigned based off of the actual tanks now. Ooh, you mean for oh, the warden mean, tank yeah. or the, the gun, oh, no. any the gun turret, the stationary the, AT yeah, turret? Yeah, oh, the anti tank turret. Yeah, I want to see that get redesigned now it, with the actual, you know, tur the well, tanks. I, I think that AT turret is just in a weird place because of how awkward it is to utilize and how often it team kills and what? so on and so forth. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. Sure. Brian Glenn last night. It, ne it needs what? a, a do-over once tanks come out because I don't think tanks will fire the same kind of shells that the AT guns fire, which is at once an armor-piercing and an explosive shell. What what size sh um, round? Big. Is the uh, AT gun? Is it? Is it it's, one? It's basically it like a naval mil? cannon. They just they just like stuck <laughs> on some concrete foundations. <laughs> yeah. like a, 
I'm pretty, pretty sure it just throws satchels at you. 150 millimeter <laughs> cannon, something like that. I don't know. Can uh, I get a satchel catapult, please? <laughs> yes. Trebuchets confirmed. Well, trebuchets. we're getting a different kind of catapult. It's more like a slingshot, and it's not for satchels. I'm oh to my it. god, yeah, you're right. Like... That's a good transition. I like that. I like that a lot. Hey, hey boys. Look at it. That's what I'm here for. It's really uh, the top minds of the community so, have gathered here so, today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there it is. The the rifle grenade. Uh, you guys ever stop and wonder, huh, I have a lot of these open slots on my character inventory. What are they going to put there? Well, here's one <laughs> of the things they're going to put there. Um, <laughs> so it goes. Now, the uh, first question I have with this beast, I know we haven't really, well, I'll dive into it, is do you need to equip the rifle grenade launcher onto your rifle? Yes, you do. Yes. Okay. So they added yeah, My understanding mechanic. is that it's you put the rifle grenade launcher like into a slot somewhere, and when you yeah. have the rifle, you press F to change the fire mode, and that's how you equip it. Ah, you know, okay. th th there, there is one flaw to this in that you're going to need a handful of launchers because the way these are supposed to work, right, is you basically take out the actual rifle cartridge and you replace it with a blank, and you basically chamber the gases from that blank into launching the entire launcher with the grenade that becomes a projectile. It doesn't work like that oh. in the game, sir. They haven't put that much thought into it. But it's strapped it into it. Look at it. No, it is. No, I it did is. not and know I was, how these work. I, the, I, I know how the, they work. Yeah. I was on just the just be a branch. holder kind of thing so, it doesn't, so the grenade doesn't mm -hmm. fall off. Well, are the I mean, uh, launchers like one use, or can they be used for multiple grenades? They can grenades? be used for multiple. Well, so basically how they work well, is here, you, take, yes. you take the grenade, throw it into your inventory you attach the grenade launcher itself and you just fire your grenades by switching your fire mm -hmm. mode and it increases the but range that's... by i think up to a screen and a half but i'm not sure yeah that's yeah. what yeah, like it's about the good for. but again that's uh, my, my complaint for realism is be, the reason for that that thing is the launcher is the the grenade itself doesn't make a very good projectile and it doesn't you know chamber the gases into it correctly the other thing that the launchers do, like on the M1 Grand, for instance, that it has like a screw that you use to help adjust your um, the amount of, of gases going into it, like like an, an adjustment thing. It just kind of bores in, and that's how you set your range. And you also have a sight that gets attached to it uh, specifically for this. And you get like a little pocket handbook that says, okay, if you're looking at this, you want to set your your grenade launcher for like a quarter turn. And then the whole thing gets shot away. Um, you're supposed to be able to deploy these, you know, relatively quickly. You know, you you with the M1 Grand, it had a very strange issue because the gases in it were very, you know, a lot more than some of the other ones. They had to create like a, a little screw and plug that went into the barrel. But yeah, it's I don't know, it's 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 an interesting um, piece. You can't use it for HE grenades. Keep that in mind, guys. Yeah, no, it's just yeah. frag grenades at this point. In time. That would be OP. Yeah, Maybe smoke hard. grenades, they said, right? Yeah, I smoke mean, grenades. I think they're spending it to smoke and gas. I think Ooh. that it would be okay to use it for HE grenades, because imagine how inaccurate and hard to do that would be. You could also make it so that way when you have an HE grenade equipped to your uh, grenade ro uh, launcher, you essentially move it like mortar speed, because that thing would be heavy and throw off your aim. Mm. It could also, it'd also be at a reduced range, just like how the HE grenade is regularly. Also, too. like... I seriously want to assault a tank with HE rifle grenades. Can you imagine how fun that would be? Oh, Just sort of like... RPG. No, it's yeah, bludgeon uh, RPGs. Point, it's grenade. More than RPGs would just bomb. become useless. Like, I'm yeah, still they're still useless, but... useless, but... They'd That's still be true. perfectly useful because they have a lot of range on the rifle grenade as well as damage. But you can already... Okay, so you can already throw a grenade at, like... Uh, uh, really far. Okay, so screen. for the fr the frigs are about forty meters, thirty thirty meters or so is is the edge of your screen. Um, the the HEs are about half that because apparently you can't throw them that far. They're not a baseball. Um, but to be able to suddenly throw them, you know, sixty five meters, which is the minimum distance for a mortar. Uh, I I don't know. I the the it basically cuts out the cost for sulfur. Here, or are used for sulfur. Hmm. You'll no longer need to make mortar rounds at that point because you could be 65 meters away from whatever. I mean, yeah. at this point, you know, the whole reason they made this thing is because mortars are 
so useless for anti-infantry work mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Yep. And that's Since where the frags come in. Yeah. Yesterday I mean, it I could be like a sort of tech cycling. upgrade for it. It'd be interesting yeah. to see weapons and equipment actually be enhanced as you tech up things. Like, for example, maybe a throwable satchel charge or maybe a triggerable satchel charge. This isn't Battlefield, dude. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> we, we should never stop thinking of ways that we could improve the situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, as, as wonderful as those ideas could be, potentially be there's also massive drawbacks to just flaws in the community uh, mainly trolls if you were to increase it like that um true yeah yep. yeah because i mean if you make things more efficient more um, safe for you to use those are things that can then be used against you and so it's it's almost a catch-22 um yeah so Speaking of which, what else? What I don't else know if you guys had a chance to jump onto the Dead Branch at all. I think it's still up. I haven't. I haven't, actually. I have not. Well, it is currently on this map. I don't actually have the map map itself, but it the is... Map map. The map oh, map. Oh, right. Fisherman's Row. On the map, yep, the Fisherman Row. It's um, it's a pretty map. It's really it's Oh, really it's confirmed? Pretty. It, it, is confirmed. it does look good. It's, it's yeah. confirmed it's in there. Uh, so there are five towns. Uh, spread across. It's uh, pretty evenly distributed um, on it. Mm -hmm. There's a couple uh, key points. One of them. You got the map of it in there? I do not have the map of it, no. No. Oh, okay. uh, it, one of if the. Uh, chat has it sent to me. Yeah. One of the key areas is going to be a bridge, of course. Any, any game can't be uh, fought without a choke point bridge. But if I were to able to get a picture of the map, I'd be able to show you. Um, it's basically the two islands connected by one. It's basically like a figure eight island with a bridge somewhere in yeah. there. Yeah, there's, so there's a bridge, and then there's like a land section that goes around the... Uh, this is this area um, where the chat is <laughs> down in the bottom right-hand corner is kind of like a harbor area, and there's a town located more inland um, that is going to be like a key point to fight over. There's two lonely sulfur nodes down there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All the logic guys are like, oh my god, sulfur, let's go. <laughs> yeah, bum rushed a bridge. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it. I mean, it looks stylistically really good. Um, it's supposed to be thirty v thirty, and um, <laughs> it's basically a tutorial island. Yes. Reference. Yes. Well, everyone says that. If you don't I, get that reference, I don't know what's wrong with you. Runescape. <laughs> um, it's <laughs> it's basically. I don't know. Everyone says it's supposed to be like a tutorial island. I see it being used in that manner on occasion. It'd be nice, you know, whenever we get a, a, a stream hit from a bunch of streamers to just deploy this a couple of times. I actually brought this up. I'd like to see, like, community helpers get access to, like, a password on these. So we go, hey, you need to, to learn the game. Come with me, put this password into the server, and we'll go. And it's a controlled environment. Yeah. Um, that I could yeah. see happening. Past that, I think it's going to be a server for those that like to run and gun. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's also a possibility, I'm not, I'm not which sure is good, of course. But yeah, I mean, on one hand, like if that's really what they like the most, then like who's going to stop them from enjoying the game their way, right? But on the other hand, I'm not sure like how many people that's going to drag away from the the main event. But I think that'll be less of a problem with early access and stuff when there's more people yeah. to go around. Yeah. I also think that, like, as much of it is a tutorial island, it's it's really good. Like, it's a huge step forward for making it easier for new players to understand the game in a, in a way that's not like, you know, oh, I just joined the game for the first time. Oh, I took 10 steps away from my town hall and got murdered Where's by a robot. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> How do I get a gun? What is this? I don't understand. You know, moving from that to a much more friendly first player experience. But I think on its own it's still missing a lot, you know, like there's still a tutorial that they need. There's still like, you know, all this yeah. other stuff. Well, yeah. and that's where, you know, I'd like to see these types of maps have some type of, I, I know I, no one likes to hear rank lock or level lock, but this would be a good way of, of adding some level of separation, you know, for that. Um, you could even just do a thing where you have a separate server. You don't. It doesn't have to be 
the only server running this map, but you could have a server that's just like, okay, everyone ranks five and below or whatever. You can access mm. this server, but everyone above, if you want to play this map, just go on this other server kind of thing. Right. So it's less yeah, of a just... map control for the lower ranks and more of just a game kind of control. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't see it being a friendly player experience if the map is like chock full of team deathmatch players who only play combat and they like murder everyone from 30 meters away with their pistols and shit. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, I know I, I'm hoping that the community offers that we get to uh, utilize this map to a full extent. Um, I know like I saw a bear, for instance, this makes a perfect map for you to like do your videos, your updates. Oh yeah, it's great. Everything's a short distance, so I don't have to run all the places. <laughs> it would also yeah. be a very good map to see some skirmishes could see yeah. some clan skirmishes yep. going. That's Absolutely. How, yeah, that's, that's what yeah. I'm looking forward to. Yeah, yeah. Since, yeah, since you don't need to fill up, you know, 60 people on a side, 30 people is very doable for a lot of clans and alliances and stuff. So, yeah, mm. it sounds cool. And, you know, even for, like, all the people who want to just do skirmishes and stuff, it doesn't remove any of the logistics. That's still there. They still need to do that stuff <coughs> to get their gun. I would even say it's There's just a less of a barrier because of how small the map is. We have less, you yeah. have less room to, you know, go side to side, and you have a huge choke point where everyone's going to be, you know? All right, guys, I'm, last game goal is five minutes ago, next one is five minutes from now. <laughs> I haven't been on the map yet, but from what I can tell, it looks like there's a lot more, like, detail in between all the, the, the important gameplay bits. Like, the gameplay bits are, like, the nodes and houses and garrisons and roads and stuff like that. But in between those, like especially since the beginning of the open world and everything, the the maps have become a lot more detailed and interesting. Like the areas feel different from each other and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm more, a little like, jealous like, that. Like, uh, yeah, the, the beautiful the farms western and stuff like that. I'm a little yeah. jealous the western end of Umbral Wildwoods and um, these kind of farms in them right now. Because what is it? Just those pumpkins and some wheat. Those are yeah. that's a Mediterranean well, lake really beautiful Italy type shit. Well, and, yeah, and that's the thing is, Matt, uh, Matt said, yeah, definitely. Matt had said that the the hardest part of, of the map design isn't really the map itself. It's all the assets that go along with it. You know, with the trenches, for instance, we finally have a way of doing trenches on weathering. Uh, on weathering. Um, now they could take that information and be able to put trenches into more maps. Um, I'd like to see all the other maps get a little TLC with all mm -hmm. the new assets they come up, especially with Weather Expanse, it's looking so good. It's it's really nice to see the next map, even just now from the picture, just looking really good. Yeah, and it, it kind of like um, on the old Upper Heartlands, I remember one of the criticisms that a lot of people had talked about, including myself, was that there are these really cool like pumpkin patches out in the middle of nowhere, and there's all these other mm -hmm. really cool things out in the middle of nowhere, but nobody ever went there. And so, like, later mm. they added, like, cow trails, and they added more detail with all the hedgerows head and stuff. And they kind head of, like, head 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 yeah, they kind of, like, oh, God, don't. They highlighted. They, they, like, funnel people into the interesting areas and keep the interesting areas relevant from a gameplay standpoint so that you don't, like, you know, try to walk around the outside of the map and suddenly find this cool, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe castle or something. But, the, like, it never has any gameplay impact. I've seen people build in it before. Yeah, I know. I, that's 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 obviously an Easter egg. I'm not, but like you know, like the 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 farm fields and the like trails through the the wheat and stuff like that. That's really cool. I yeah. definitely want to see, you know, these improvements brought to all the other maps, one and I thing... I have no doubt that the devs will do that. One thing I'd like to see on maps, especially if we got a map that maybe was more trench based, was like. I don't know, projects. Maybe the trenches aren't there initially, but there are areas where we could dig trenches. Oh, almost oh, like, like world objects. Worlds, build, oh, like, world, yeah. world, world structures. I like that. Yeah. There so, like, that. the trenches would be almost indestructible. They'd offer you a great way to get to the front line, but the thing is that you'd have to invest time in building them, and you also always knew which areas these trenches would be in, so you could defend against them. User Don't to make it require rock. a. Oh, give you know, give me a shovel instead of a construction vehicle. Um. <laughs> or like maybe we could have I don't know fixed artillery pieces that uh, we can't move them, but 
we can use them to shoot at town halls from areas we normally couldn't. So then we can sort of put pressure on people to be aggressive. Uh, maybe. That might destroy the defensive. It would have to be on very limited towns if that's even a thing. But well, yeah, it would be... To... I, I think... It would be items that are only available in certain areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still and think the game benefits be a lot more from having, you know, that open world sandbox to it, where instead of finding these... Just bring your own kind of thing. Of course, that would be made a lot easier with a hitch on the back of a truck, but... It'd be cool to see, like, on a lot of the areas that don't get utilized a lot and maps have, like, pre built outposts not not pre-built but like world structures that can be rebuilt of outposts that are already there so you just what if they use you can start building them with like a CV what if they use the ruin system what if they use the ruins to make a few outposts already on the map oh, and so, so basically then, command yeah. conquer style almost. well that's the thing is command conquer has those yeah. capturable buildings that i think yeah i think we said this like every single stream that some type of capturable building that gives you something would be really freaking neato yeah i mean i think it'd be nice if maybe there were maybe something like called an arsenal or an ordinance or something and it's just a place that pumps out explosives at a relatively continuous rate it would make like an artillery shell every minute uh, a capturable old uh Factory. Munitions factory. Munitions. Yes. Yeah, I could, I could uh, see that because then it would yeah. give you reason to fight over. Yeah, a reason to fight over something. Or, or, that... Well, consider this: the sulfur right now is like surface sulfur, right? Which isn't really a thing in real life, but we'll go with it. Um, imagine a like we had like a borehole yeah, or a capturable sulfur mine. Yeah. Yeah, or, or yeah a, that could be. Or a salt mine for the wardens. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because then that would give you without directly. I don't know, man. Those colonial teals are pretty salty. I am moments. okay. I'm pretty salty about the fact that the Warrens have more sulfur nodes than the colonials do on Deadlands. Plus the the whole fact that the the I'm, fuel for colonials and Deadlands. I'm is pretty really salty that generally speaking, really. colonials have better town layouts. I yeah, I, I think yeah, they're that's something I'm going to agree with. Our 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 yeah. town layout is definitely more open space, especially on something like Deadlands. I mean, mm -hmm. you got all like, those open fields. I mean, granted, they're really back, easy to attack, but I don't I don't know as much about the new English Shore. But looking back on the old English Shore, it was really hard to assault colonial towns because you took uh you took what is it, Marrow's Rest or whatever? No. Huh? It was. Uh, you Woodbine, know the useless Terrace town Coast, that was just there because well, Kelpie's well, was on the other side. No. Uh, no, the well woodbine. Uh, woodbine. Uh, you took woodbine. Congratulations! You could make okay. spawn supplies, and now you have to stretch your supply lines even thinner than they were before. Oh, you took salt book. Congratulations! Now the colonials get to counterattack you from two different directions, and you have no defenses built because they didn't build walls in their ear because they didn't have to because they have a river defending them. True. Yeah, but that's normally crushed by some pretty heavy opposition. Um, that's that's where sometimes the colonials fall short is because we have such open fields, we're not able to fully defend a flank. Because, I mean, if you get a small force like Edge that goes behind enemy lines and just blows a hole in a wall against the map border or just in an area where people aren't suspecting it, mm -hmm. infiltration is like a very serious issue, especially when using it against the colonials. Um, I may have been on open. several of those raids. Yeah, I mean, it's they effective, and I mean, it's a good tactic, and it's a tactic that it should be used often because it's it works really well. But um, but if it was just, used more often, then people would start to make counters to it. I mean, we can counter it now just by building. you got to teach the new guys how to build properly. I mean, that's the biggest yeah. issue in this game is people don't know how to build right. That's why you oh, end up with just, foxholes in the middle of the road, <laughs> shy boxes, you can't destroy yeah. them, they're in to, front of something. Uh, to add on to building, I think it would be really beneficial if we could actually see like more friendly structures on the map, like even just walls on the map to actually see the layout of, oh, where do I have to go to actually exit this this fortress? Because there's gates nowhere, <laughs> or whatever, you know. Mm. Yeah, even but just being the, able the to see of... the defensive layout would be. I layer just layers in general on the map, just being able to toggle on and off layers. Nice. Um, there was yeah. okay, so there was one time that on colonials, 
some guy, some troll decided to build literally a hundred, was it a hundred and ten um, watchtowers in a row, radio towers. A because, really determined troll. I don't really. Yeah, he, he built them all between Sun's Hollow and Liberation over a hundred yeah. towers in a row. I still have the sure screenshot somewhere. Just, like, dumb or something? Because like that's a really backwards. He kept on. Troll. We kept on telling him stop, and he would not stop. So you want to send me that and, image? I I, well, I it's it's somewhere on my NAS because it's I mean this is back in the Victor's days. He and I both oh, like gotcha, yeah. basically cried about it. Um, but he he spent you know that's that's thirty five hundred basic materials, and, and his response was, "But they'll shoot the enemy, right?" And it's like, "No, you're oh. just a troll." But yeah, it'd be cool if they could be upgraded to like you know help people with stuff or yeah, you know, had some basic you know gun, uh, but. But yeah, no, he he built so much, and just the fact he couldn't toggle off all that nonsense, or even being able to just toggle off certain radio towers, um, like when you get a tower up behind enemy lines and it keeps on flashing, you know. And I'm like, I'm nowhere near this. I'll never need to see this tower. Um, being able to toggle those on and off, but just just layers in general. Give me something I could toggle on and off, locations of tunnel networks, for instance, or the radius of tunnel networks. Definitely. Yeah. Is there anything else? Um, I, mean, honestly, I think there, there wasn't a whole there. lot like crazy stuff that happened this past week as for updates and dev builds, but uh, what what was the other oh, stuff uh, on the ground? We could go back ground, to groundbreaking, score. guys. This is something that's going to break the game, um, and a lot of people are going to be upset about it. But um, they changed the prone animation, or they added Damn. animation to proning so it takes time to get down to the ground yeah no oh, so i can't do that spammy oh okay yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty good yeah they slowed it yeah, down I remember the call, call of duty uh dolphin flopping as we call it. Um, <laughs> that'd be cool I yeah like that in this game can, like can't dolphin, dolphin flop sliding yeah the sliding yeah. animation I, hang on the then there's one number one quirk that i have and that's when i'm prone or, or uh and you get shot Sometimes your dude will like stand up. You ever oh see that? yeah, yeah. That's that's gotta go. It's it's so ridiculous. Like, oh man, suddenly I can get shot because my height just increased because my dad decided yeah. to stand up when he got shot. Especially um, if it's like a pillbox or something, then you're good yeah. as dead. Imagine like um, Forrest Gump running around. It just reached right up and bit me. <laughs> for, for, for Forrest Gump. <laughs> um, let's see, Dev Branch. Let's see what the Dev Branch says. It might be interesting if you could get a piece of equipment that would show you what the uh, what the aggro zone was for pillboxes and foxholes. Yeah, tier two. I'd, I'd, I'd still be matching a tier two radio or something, or tier two binox, just for that. Let's see. Fisherman's Row. Uh, grenade launcher. Um, so, the, no. so the grenades... Okay, so the, the projectile is going to be... Uh, Produce at the workshop. I don't know if what tech level that's going to be, but that's an interesting thing to have it produced at the workshop. That's cool. So um, only, only fray grenades are currently compatible for the time being. F to parry specs or to change fire modes. That's weird. Um, is F mine. is is F used for anything else right now? F is used uh, to pay respects. Callouts. Call no, they, that's right. They're changing that to Maybe? V. That's a little bit lower now. Um, Let's see, transitioning to prone takes time. Oh, they upgraded to Unreal Engine 4.16. I believe they were on 4.14. Oh, 15, right. I'm going to pretend like I know what that affects. Yeah, I, I, don't, I have no idea either. But they're they're up to date, basically, on Unreal Engine. Don't don't um, worry. One of the devs will come into the channel just to tell us that one thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important. Um, callouts changed to V. Now, there is an issue, an ongoing issue, where this happened when the callouts happened. Um, the, there was an issue where you had to reset your your uh, map bindings, your key bindings, uh, in order to get the F uh, callout function to work. So that might be a thing. Um, I don't know if it's going to be an issue. I know they try to fix that, but if you have custom key bindings, you might need to reset it. Uh, oh, this is one. Uh, the reprimander name is no longer shown in chat log when a player is reprimanded. So if I reprimand Tiberius oh, because I hate him or something. Um, it's, he's no longer going to be able to know it's me. 
or maybe he'll know it's me, but not the chat. You know, well, it's not some mob mentality, anyways. It's, which is always good. It's it's going to it's going to be a lot harder on the Edge Clan these days then, because it's hard to <laughs> tell if we're getting reprimanded by somebody on our team or somebody on our clan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's if that's only for chat or if I could see who reprimanded me. Um, because that's an issue, you know. It, people reprimand you for no good reason. Um, it's it'd be nice to still be able to see, hey, why'd you reprimand me, so I can ask them. Uh, just didn't like my choice in music or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, server browser no longer misreports server information. I know that was fixed like three times. Uh, server queue no longer gets into a bad state after a while, preventing players from joining. I'm not sure exactly what that means. It no longer gets into a bad state. Um, I don't know if there was an issue with the server queue technology wise, or maybe they swapped out where the server queue actually happens. Does it happen after the faction selection or before? You know, um, Fixed values of certain environment textures so they aren't overly dark. Let's see, there is a known issue. Garrison House's AI remains active even after being disconnected from a tunnel network. Just refuse to give up. Apparently, the work in progress is game balance and bug fixes. Well, that's a good thing to have ongoing. <laughs> <laughs> Ongoing until the end of time. It'll be written. Work in progress. Day. Development is basically listed there. Um, yeah. It would actually uh, be really interesting to see foxholes and garrison houses have an inventory as opposed to the uh, the system that they currently have with the tunnel networks. Because imagine being able to hand feed garrison houses in order to keep them alive. Yeah, that would be a cool. As system. a Logi player, screw you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, the tunnel network would automatically allow them to get their own ammo. But if you were, like, low on, or low on supplies, or maybe the town had been temporarily overrun, or an artillery piece had taken out your town hall from maximum range, you could feed mm -hmm. a garrison house to keep it up and running until you get the uh, town hall repaired. But, That's so here's the problem, though. Like, idea. Like, the, I would use that offensively so hard. All you would need to do is have a couple, couple of good people just to carry some logistics up with you, build your, your your stuff on the front line, and just shove a bunch of stuff into it, and you suddenly have a front line offensive without needing to build that's, tunnel networks. That's why you yeah. combine it with my earlier statement of a fortification level dependent on what your tunnel network is connected to. So if you were making a foxhole that wasn't connected to a tunnel network that was connect or that wasn't connected to, like a resistance camp or a town hall or an outpost, it would be a far more fragile object. So like two guys with rifles could take it out. Mm -hmm. You Perhaps. could still use it offensively and you could still possibly sort of uh, fight with it. And for that matter, I believe that the, or sort of the debuff, the lack of ability to shoot is sort of on a timer anyways. It, uh, it goes or it turns on after a time so you could also have the sort of resistance or the fortification buff be on a timer as well mm. make it so that way you could still hold out for a little while longer after your town hall goes down as opposed to just sort of like up oh, town hall's dead time to die we roll over now Yeah, it, 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 I still think that idea would need to be flushed out even more because there's a lot of there's True. a lot of uh, details that would need to be hammered out just because. Yeah, it's it's a complicated system that might bring back if a clan is super organized. You know that that spammy foxhole behind enemy lines to disrupt their everything ever kind of uh, strategy. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's it's weird that there seems like to be a lot of good content in this patch. It's 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 a little bit slower than the uh, the other one. They're ramping up for you know uh, like an update that's gonna make like the tunnel networks and sulfur look like freaking like a bug fix or something. Oh god, I just <laughs> realized something. The game is going to go into like actual early access soon. That means we're gonna get another oh, right. wave. We're gonna get another wave of like not. 
not saying it's necessarily a bad thing, but like the YouTubers who think that they know exactly how the game is played, and so like it's going to be like, oh god, no! Suddenly we have fifty bajillion. I, it's it's no going to be the way we really got to get those tutorials out. Soon. Everything yeah. that yeah, like buddy. the community helpers and, and mods have done so far to like keep the community <laughs> running and knowledgeable. Hey it's guys, Blue Drake be, here. It's gonna be freaking swap. It's gonna be like oh, a million god. people coming into one country post office or something. It's your boy, Baron Skinny Von Penis. Games, everybody. <laughs> Hey guys, it's I Fly Daily here. with another video. Yeah. Hey, don't don't. I'll be drinking cyanide. No, no, no. Okay, so. Oh, so an expert. Uh, yeah, us community helpers though. We, I mean, we we had good practice with the last massive streamer hits. That's for sure. Yeah, thank um, God we got our shit together. But you know, we'll have some at least some good videos, you know, in place hopefully soon. As soon as everyone gets me there footage Tiberius uh, oh, from <laughs> the, the stop. I'm starting to upload it. <laughs> Slowly. He's Slowly. carrying the packets to me. I do. Uh, <laughs> I can, just mail you. I can yeah. put it all on like a 256 gig USB drive and mail it to you faster than I could fucking upload it. Probably, I, yeah. I did just um, realize a wonderful yeah, thing about Hopefully by this. then we'll have some kind of formal in-game tutorial as well. Mm, but yeah. I mean, are even something obsolete. small like a text tutorial or something. I mean, for well, that's, that's the well, thing. Well, is, they is, used to have one, but then well, they have a, system, a really good system in place, and this is something that I hope Tutorial Island becomes. Uh, with the lore system, you already have in place the ability of of having Matt just spam around little messages that pop up when you walk up to stuff. Right? Tutorial yeah. Island. That just turn take Tutorial Island. Yeah, exactly. and, and and just make it interactive. You know, that would be a very, very, very low, um, low cost way of having just simple information being given to people. I believe that people bring oh, up running bleeding. with rifles quite often, but um, <laughs> running with rifles actually does something rather nice. So the main yeah. menu system, you can exit out of it, and there is actually an area that you just spawn in. It's in the background of the main menu. And it has all of the basic things you need to know, and you just walk around and use them. Oh, huh. The that more is you know. Good system. Yeah. There's like a little track around the edge of the map that you can use to drive a vehicle. There's a small shooting range with guns and ammo next to it. There's a little like grenade range, and then there's like an objective to blow up with explosives. Hmm. I'm not saying rip off running with rifles, but I am saying that's the last thing we need, huh? More accusations of ripping off running with rifles. Uh, Rimley, <laughs> Remley with rifles, right? Um, Remley with yeah, rifles. <laughs> yeah. No. So yeah. So with these tutorials, though, hopefully we'll we'll get them done. We just need to get the guys in here to do the scripting and everything. The scripts, uh, get them recorded, get those edited, and and then we can start. You know, with all the major changes, having to do it again. Um, but yeah, no. Hopefully, that'll get up pretty soon. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that. I mean, that, that, that basically covers it for the most part. I don't know uh, if you have any guys, anything else to uh, say. So I, I only had two things I wanted to jump in about this current war that's been going on and has been so epic and all that stuff. I think the reason it's lasted so long is one because. It, didn't have like a, a an announced start date ahead of time as much as i like you know getting up on saturdays and getting all my stuff ready for a long day of playing foxhole and stuff it appears so far that doing the the, the community maps that happen or the campaign maps that happen that aren't announced ahead of time end up being better battles and also because on both sides people were committed to fighting and like fighting tooth and nail all the way all the time like no one ever gave up no one ever logged off on mass or as i could tell anyway because throughout these past few days every single inch the colonials have taken they paid for it with buckets and buckets of blood i mean the colonials actually have like several thousand more casualties than the wardens right now you know i i think i can actually mildly contest your statement that uh the wars that aren't announced are the best because there was a weekly war that was happening and the wardens were sitting there and were prepared to jump in as soon as it went live, and it actually went live a good 15 minutes early. Mm -hmm. And while that's... that isn't exactly unannounced, it is pretty close. And that that's, weekly that's... war was terrible. 
Well, well this I this mean, war was announced though. This the current campaign. The, the there was a campaign front that opened on eleven, but yeah. um, later that day or the next day, the new front opened on Deadlands, which is the one that's still fighting. Well, keep in mind that's we also have two fronts, and we don't have the player base to support two fronts. We also got to remember it's a holiday weekend for us United States people, you know, coming back from it right now. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a really it, it's a really hard thing to, to gauge this based on this one week. I still think that there still needs to be something for the community to rally around. I don't think there's a harm in having uh, campaigns start at 11 o'clock. I'm hoping this campaign will, will last a good long while, though. Like, I don't think there should be a need to set a time as far as the campaign goes. Yeah, this um, campaign might well last into this next Saturday. So uh, yeah. I think they, instead now, what, of starting a new campaign, they might just open a new front on 11 or something. Yeah. I don't know. Now, when we get uh, World Conquest back, which I still really have a lot of fun playing, yeah. um, I, I want to be... start seeing those, yep. you know, announced. Those still need to be announced to some extent. It would be fun to see a sort of mixture of World Conquest and this campaign idea. Sort of as you win maps, you can get more benefits from the next map or something. Maybe, just, I don't know, like unlocking maps to fight on and stuff like that after a certain point. Yeah. Like, the losing side gets their map unlocked, and so they have the ability to bring in resources from this back map then. Whereas the winning side has to sort of stay and fight on whatever territory that they've held. I could see that kind of working. Yeah. I think I, th I still think that that the tug of war mode for for world conquest needs to happen. Sorry, uh, campaign. I like that. So what? We just fight one map at a time, or two other maps yeah, like feeding into the, that one, and then well, the out the outcome of the can of the campaign map of that of that region uh, dictates which map is next next map. So oh, yeah, let's yeah. say you start in the very middle. I I guess I'll call out um, Deadlands. Deadlands. Dead, yeah, Deadlands is Deadlands. the classic start. If if you lose Deadlands as a colonial, the next war is Upper Heartlands or something of that nature. Whereas if you win it as a colonial, the <coughs> next map would be. Callahan's, uh, Callahan's, yeah, Callahan's. You know that that type of, you know that that will basically make it so the 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 campaign doesn't end until you've pushed your the way all the way back. Fall. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that would just add the competitive nature back into the campaigns even more so. Because um, right now it, it's it's the point where. Uh, it, it's whoever holds the majority of the of the wins, and right now the colonials are what one away from from having three. We need two more total wins, um, and I think that's kind of weird because then the last couple wars are just consolation prizes, right? Um, yeah, I know. Hmm. Any other things to add in? Well, uh, does that um, pretty much cover everything? Or you know, I think yeah. one one last final thing. I think I need to officially draw up the rules for the Foxhole drinking game if we're going to be entering into early access. Yes, yes, please do, please do. We we all need uh, the drinking game. So, where is the a, front line? Take a thousand it's, drinks. It's basically a, a small collection of things that veteran players do whenever they hear particular things called out that are rather unhelpful, such as, we need logistics at X location. What sort of logistics? Logistics. Okay. We need, no, we yeah. need supplies, or we need... <laughs> Can somebody drive me... Can somebody I'll drive me, metal. a singular person, to the front line? Or where is the front line? Where's um, we have zero spawn supplies left. Drive away for not giving you a ride because I think it's Halo. Yeah. <laughs> where? where um, yeah. What, we have zero spawn supplies left. Can someone bring us another? Some another thing we might want to do if this game is entering early access rather soon. Uh, if a YouTuber demands logistics because they are a YouTuber, take a shot. Oh God! <laughs> how, how about just how about just YouTuber coverage shots like <clears throat> Access versus Allies? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Axis versus allies. Or wait, wait. Uh, One side calls another side a Nazi. Or the French. 
or anything French. derogatory. Yes. And uh, the, the French is pretty understandable. The French is derogatory. <laughs> it is. I don't know, man. I'm a Frenchman. I take that as a prime insult, man. Je okay, Tobias. Uh, yeah, Tobias. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god this oh, is... oh, my family backgrounds from quebec that doesn't count as french french <laughs> french elite french uh is worse man french elite commandos using artillery upon enemies it's just a bunch of mimes loading baguettes into a cannon <laughs> man you're gonna take on a, a town hall with one shot with that good lord <laughs> oh yeah especially the stale one I, I i really can't wait until we have april fool's day again yeah, they, oh, the devs have basically a year to prepare for April Fool's Day. <laughs> guys, so, guys, for April Fool's Day, the other devs need to make wheelbarrows and then put them in without telling HB. And then it's just like, <laughs> fucking wheelbarrows! <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Now I have to edit that out. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. He won't expect them to actually listen to me. Nobody listens to Stranger. Is there uh, anything else we wanted to talk about uh, in general? I think we covered just about everything we can. Um, yeah, no, I, I think mean, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, so for the I've rest of people, um, it, within the next 30 minutes, uh, as usual, Community Helpers channel and the Foxhole Discord, the Shiggles, as uh, Catherine and I have coined them, will be <laughs> ongoing. So if you'd like to come hang out and chat about absolutely nothing relevant or a lot of relevant things, who knows? Um, come say hello. We'll be in there. Well, right. I'll be making dinner, but I might put it on in the background. We'll see. That's a weird uh, oh. background music for you to listen to, but... Eh. Uh, any last remarks, anyone? No, I don't think so. I think this is... <laughs> Take a shot! Been a lot of fun talking about... as uh, I think it's very light comparative to the way that the meta has changed, so... Like, it seems yeah. empty, this community stream, but at the same time, there was still a lot of content to talk about, and that was good. I mean, like, yeah. you, you can't have, you know, meta overthrowing updates every other week. You know, you got to take it off. Yeah. Well, hang on. There, there, well, there is a gonna, point. Uh... We are the meta th update people. Like, they're, they're just supposed to break the game during this time. And we're supposed to tell them why it's broken. Mm. Yeah, Casper using the, the construction tools as a battering ram or something. Yeah. No, no, that's just Casper <laughs> just being broken. He's his own meta. He doesn't count. Yeah. If Casper like has to, broken could... the Casper. Yep. Continue. Which is broken. Shoot the, the shit in the uh, FOD if anybody's interested yeah. in joining. Yeah, we'll be in there. I believe at this point in time, it's uh, time for us to bid our farewells. Everybody, thank you for stopping by. It's uh, been a pleasure. See thank you, you in the Mark voice Foot, channel. for adding everyone. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Gracias.